you're just joining us, maybe you just turned the channel and you came to us here and you're wondering, where are these guys? We are on the Iraq-Iran border. This is Iraqi Kurdistan. That is Iran. You're looking into Iran right now. You have a view right now that few Americans have ever had, quite frankly, at least in the past 40 years. We're ringed, I guess you could say, and surrounded by Iranian Revolutionary Guards positions. I can see them. They're right here. Uh, they're white structures here, and they're all around us, and they're watching right now. But we're in the good hands of the Kurdish Peshmerga. Dalton, tell our viewers, we keep saying the IRGC, that stands for Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps. Uh, tell us who they are and why they're so dangerous and why we're a little nervous as they're staring at us right now over yonder. The Iranian people are amazing. Iran and the Iranian regime are two separate things. In 1979, a revolution happened in Iran. And there then became, it was born, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. So their job is to, they're the custodians, the guardians, the protectors of the revolution that's been holding the 80, 90% of the country that's amazing as prisoners and as hostage. 2003, Saddam Hussein was deposed and taken out of power, and there was a unity government formed in Iraq, which was supposed to have equal representation between Sunni, Shia, and Kurd. What happened was the IRGC put its foot in the door and began influencing things between 2003 and now. An intelligence report was released that said that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps now has more influence in Iraq and in the Greater Levant now, 17 years after the invasion in 2003, than any time in history between then and now, which is a terrifying reality. And here's why this is significant, because the greater that threat grows, the more silent the Kurds are going to become. Why? because the more fearful they're going to be of the repercussions of speaking out against this beast, they can overpower them in a moment, which is why we need to lift our voices on their behalf, because they're gonna be increasingly marginalized and silenced because of those forces that are on the hill surrounding us right now. And I think it's urgent that we see out of the box creative thinking in terms of policy to stave this off because I do believe it's a 1935 moment. Yeah. We're approaching the point of no return where it is too late. And I don't like hype and hyperbole and sensationalism. This is not that. This is something, a very clear and present danger. And I don't think the Western world's prepared for what's around the corner. Now Europe is looking to appease the Iranian regime, quite frankly, which is sad to say. We could use a man like Winston Churchill today in Europe. I think he's turning in his grave as he sees the appeasement of European nations, sadly, uh, towards the Iranian regime. The Trump administration has made some very strong moves, as you said, and some, and some right moves, uh, killing that Iran deal, sanctioning uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, designating them as a terrorist group, which they most surely are. The foremost, the head of the snake when it comes to global terror is the Iranian regime, and specifically this Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps that's staring at us right now here on the Iranian border. I compare them, Dalton, to the, just so people at home have kind of an image of who the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps are. Think, and you mentioned 1935, rightly, when Hitler and the Nazi regime were rising in Germany. Iran is having a similar rise right now. Think of the SS, which surrounded Hitler, He's, his elite vanguard, the SS. That's the IRGC. They answered directly to the supreme leader of Iran, Ayatollah Khamenei. Well, Dalton, we are here on the Iraq-Iran border, a place where few Americans tread. We're staring into Iran. Uh, what do we see here right now? We have a border crossing, obviously, the topography. Set the scene for us a little bit more. Yeah, right here is Kurdistan. Over here is Iran. And then Iran wraps all the way around the Turkish border is not far from here as well. In fact, if we could get over this ridge, you could see the Turkish border intersecting. In many ways, this is the crossroads of the Middle East. Yeah. Everything intersects here. This is the vortex that everything's being pulled into. And it's one of the most strategically significant, tumultuous, consequential places on the earth in our generation right now. Yeah, it's no understatement. Look, and Iran is a stone. So we could, we could literally walk into Iran right now from where we are right now, this Kurdish Peshmerga position. We could walk into Iran. We're seeing Iranian trucks come and go, imports, exports, uh, and we need to be quick here because we're yeah, being we, watched. We have to go down now, actually, because we're out exposed in the open and the soldiers are uncomfortable. So we're going to make our way downstairs and continue our conversation down there. But it's on edge here. This is not a safe place to be for very long. So Especially for two good. Americans. This is tense. Let's go.